The opinions and views expressed by the participants during this broadcast do not reflect nor represent Service of Christ Ministries Incorporated. Praise the Lord, saints, and welcome to the Gospel Truth. Welcome, welcome, welcome all that are with us today. This is uh, the Gospel Truth, and indeed, I am your host, along with Reverend Harry E. Lundy. I am Jerry Jones, pastor of service for Christ uh, Baptist Church, and we are just so excited, so thrilled, so overjoyed to have you come and join us today for another, another segment of the Gospel Truth. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15 uh, declares, uh, declares these words to us. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scripture, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scripture. This is indeed what the gospel truth is founded on, that scripture, the gospel. If anyone were to ever ask, what is the gospel? direct them to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses one through four. For in fact, that is the gospel as, as given to us in the Holy Scriptures. But it, but it goes even uh, beyond that to a practical application uh, to each of our lives. Indeed, for those of us that believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and that he died, he served as the propitiation, he served as the atonement for your sins and my sins, is pivotal to eternal life. Many of you are, are really enjoying your lives, you are having a great time living, traveling, seeing the world, progressing in life, uh, obtaining credentials, degrees, offices as a county executive, mayors, governors, presidents, senatorial offices, offices, pastors, and bishops, and apostles, and prophets, prophetess, and things of that nature. But all of the titles that you have, including your Greek organizations, whatever you are, the main title is eternal life. 
will you receive eternal life after you pass through this life? And I think that 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 is indeed where a lot of people come down on the wrong side of the equation because in many instances, they forget all about the sacrificial death of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Yes, indeed. Jesus Christ, he did come. He died on the cross at Calvary in Jerusalem as a sacrifice so that you and I could have an abundant life, that we could have abundant living. Uh, recently, we uh, did a broadcast on the Gospel Truth Global, which, is, which comes on every Friday uh, at 2 o'clock p.m. And you can also view it on Facebook. And we talked about healing, healing. And how many of you know that Jesus Christ's death on the cross indicated the body of work that he had done up to that point in his earthly visit? But in that visit, he healed uh, many people. He healed people of leprosy. He healed people of uh, paralysis. He healed people who could not see. He healed people that could not hear. He healed a withered man's hand. He, he did so many mag magnificent things in his earthly journey that we can't even begin to uh, comprehend it or talk about it. What our purpose is, that is Reverend Harry E. Lundy and myself and our church, Servants for Christ Baptist Church, what our purpose is, is to spread the gospel in a way that has impact impact on your life, that your life can be transformed just by accepting Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior in your life. It's not difficult at all. The only thing that you are requested to do is accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and believe that he died on the cross for your sins, unless like many people, you don't believe that you have any sins in your life. Well, we talked about that uh, also on Friday. Anyone who thinks that they do not have a sin is in fact doubting them, doubting their self and not thinking realistically. But the Bible tells us for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So our purpose is to esteem God to present a gospel that can be applied to your life and the lives of your family. And that brings us to the point today of what Reverend Harry E. Lundy, the assistant to the pastor and our internet pastor is going to teach on and preach about with vigor today. Reverend Lundy's subject today is, is dealing with how can you be happy in heaven? knowing that your loved ones are in hell. It's our job as leaders, as practitioners, as preachers, as elders, as bishops, as citizens, to assure that the gospel of Jesus Christ is delivered to the world and certainly to our families. Well, text today, Reverend Lundy is going to use the book of Revelation, chapter 21. I would encourage you who have your Bibles present, go to this book of Revelation, chapter 21, and turn to verses 1 through 8. Reverend London is going to read that. We thank you again for joining us on another segment of the Gospel Troop. We're so excited. And I now want to uh, uh, introduce Reverend Harry E. Lundy. Reverend Lundy is uh, Professor Christian, he is indeed a man of God. Reverend Lundy has trained so many ministers under him. He's a widow right now. But the ministers that he has trained indeed have gone on to perform miraculous ministries of their own. Reverend Lundy has extensively worked in the prison ministry. He had spent many years over at Galilee Baptist Church where he educated many of the parishioners, many of the congregants there. His body of work includes his service with the federal government. He is now a retired civil servant. But the most important title that 
he has is child of God. And although uh, he is a widower, God has blessed him to now be engaged again to get burned. What a blessing. My brothers and sisters, we're gonna bow for a word of prayer. And then after the prayer, the next voice that you hear will be that of our very own Reverend Harry E. Lundy, a man of God, a child of God, and a man that propagates this gospel of Jesus Christ excitement, enthusiasm, and vigor. I am pleased to be in the ministry with him. Let us bow for a word of prayer. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your love and your peace. We thank you for your patience. Be with us now as Reverend Harry E. Lundy delivers another message of hope, encouragement, and promise here on the gospel truth. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. We give you all the honor, Lord Jesus. Amen and amen. Well, Reverend Lundy, it's, it's so it's good to see you again today. I'm, you're looking sharp as usual, and I know that you're ready to go. So I'm going to uh, pause right here, and please uh, go ahead and proceed and give us this beautiful message that you are going to deliver today. May God bless you, sir. I want to thank you, Reverend Jones, as I give honor to God, to Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior, and to greetings to each and every one of you out there today. I want to thank you. And without further ado, uh, let us begin reading Revelation chapter 21, verses 1 through 8. And it reads like this from the New King James. Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Also, there was no more sea. Then I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride or dawn, adorned for her husband. Verse 3, and I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, behold, the tabernacle of God is with men and he will dwell with them and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death nor sorrow nor crying, there should be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. Then he who sat on the throne said, behold, I make all things new. And he said to me, write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give of the fountain of the water of life freely to him who thirsts. He who overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the cowardly, unbelieving, abominable, murderers, sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. The lake which burns with fire and brimstone. Let us bow our heads for a word of prayer. Father, I come before your throne of grace, thanking you for all that you have done and all that you purpose to do. Thank you for your forgiveness of sin. You say, if we confess with our mouths and believe in our hearts 
and be faithful, that you are faithful and just and will forgive us of all of our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. There's no reason why we shouldn't come and ask you to forgive us of our sins. For you so loved the world and gave your son to us. We thank you, Father. We thank you for this day and we thank you for your word. In Jesus' name, I pray this prayer. Amen and amen. So the lake of fire which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death, death will contain some loved ones, people that we know, some of our friends, your loved ones, my loved ones, Everybody loves loved ones. Some of our loved ones shall have their part in the lake of fire. How shall we feel about this? Your mother, father, wife, or husband, or children, and best of friends will end up in the lake of fire. While you have gone, while we have gone on to heaven. How will we feel about this? Verse four, and God will wipe away every tear from the eyes. There shall be no more death, no sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain. For the former things have passed away. The worst thing about people or human beings is that we all are born in sin. That's not all, all that's the worst thing. Many of us don't believe that and don't accept it. And that's even a deeper sin. And sin does not mean that much to us. We dwell in it. All sin is against God. And we love people who commit sins. And those sins that people commit are against God. Who are we? to love with all of our heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength. We are to love God this way, with all of our heart, with all of our soul, and with all, all of our strength. Are we loving God this way? And we are to love our neighbor as ourselves. God has already demonstrated how much he loves us by what he asked Jesus to do. And Jesus willingly did it. While we were yet sinners, what did he do? What did Jesus do? He died for us. We are terrible. Sin doesn't mean that much to us. We sin all the time and think nothing of it. We look forward to sinning, many of us. Everybody is doing what he, what is right in their own minds or in their own eyes. Who are you? Why do you keep on sinning? What has God already done because of sin? Human beings are sinners. Sin is part of our nature and character now. And it is about time we deal with our sin. It can only be dealt with through Jesus Christ. It should not be taken lightly. 
human beings, every intent of the thoughts of their hearts were only evil continually. The wickedness of people was so great on earth that God was grieved in his heart. So God said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping things and birds of the air, for I am sorry that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. The Lord spared Noah and his family from the flood he unleashed upon the earth. Everything had to begin again from Noah's family and the animals God told him to bring on board the ark likewise began again. So God destroyed the earth with a flood because of people's sin, or wickedness or evilness. We have replenished the earth in are the same way again. God is holy. Sin did not mean that much to us. And neither does the concept of holy or holiness. Because we take such things lightly, we get ourselves more trouble we get ourselves in more trouble than we realize with God. God picked out a man who was faithful. Who was faithful to him. And this man's name was Abraham. Maybe God had went to other people. And they may not have was faithful to God. But Abraham was. And from Abraham came the nation of Israel. God told Moses after Israel had be developed, they continue with sin. And, and with sin comes punishment. And God told Moses, now therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, then you shall be a special treasure to me above all people, for all the earth is mine, said God to Moses. And you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation these were the words which God told Moses to speak to the children of Israel. And he did. Exodus 19, 5 through 6. Israel has failed and sin abounds. God punishes sins. The wages of sin is death. The punishment we all deserve for our sins. Jesus Christ came and took our place for that punishment. We nailed him to the cross. Mm -hmm. And God want us to know that Jesus is the son of God. Our Lord and Savior who died for our sins. And we should go around and tell people this. We're tasked with that task. This is to be believed in our hearts and confess with our mouth that God raised him from the dead for our justification. Most of the people today do not believe 
that Jesus Christ was delivered over to death for our sins and raised to life for our justification. Some of them are yours and mine loved ones who will take part in the lake of fire, the second death. How are we to feel about this? So when we confess with our mouth Jesus as Lord and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, the Bible say we will be saved. For with the heart, we believe unto righteousness and with the mouth we confess unto salvation. For well, the scripture says, whoever believes on him will not be put to shame. For well, there is no distinction between Jew and Greek or, or Gentile. For well, the same Lord over all is rich to all who call upon him. For well, whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Romans 10, 9 through 13, this seemed to be happening only sparingly, less and less each year or decade. This is a process. There is a process involved in getting saved, which is the deliverance from the power and penalty of sin. For by grace are we saved through faith and that not of ourselves. It is the gift of God. We have to be sorry for our sins. Are we sorry for our sins and repent? Repentance is godly sorrow, sorrow for sin and turning away from it. Are we turning away from sin? Second Corinthians 7 and 10 says, for godly sorrow produces repentance to salvation, not to be regretted, but the sorrow of the world produces death. It is impossible to please God without faith, without believing. Faith is belief and trust in God. I know some parts of the Bible says the evidence of things hoped for, the substance of things hoped for, and the evidence of things not seen, but, but it, in simple terms, it's belief and trust in God. We are saved by grace through faith, not by works, it is the gift of God. You have heard of the term born again, mm -hmm. or regeneration, or saved. This is done by the Holy Spirit. Nothing from ourselves, only from God. Regeneration is the start of the sanctification process. We are to advance in sanctification in proportion to the exercise of our belief or faith, in proportion to our love and workings of the Holy Spirit who is now in us who have been saved. Paul says, we groan within ourselves eagerly waiting for the adoption, the redemption of our body, for we were saved in this hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For why does one still hope for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it 
with perseverance. Likewise, the spirit also helps in our weaknesses. For we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Now he who searches the heart knows what the mind of the spirit is because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things work together for good to them who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose, for whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he predestined, these he also called. Whom he called, these he also justified. And whom he justified, these he also glorified. We're headed for glorification. Glorification is the perfection of sanctification. And that pertains to one's inner character self or person. So it is that salvation, salvation involves justification, generation, regeneration that is, regeneration and sanctification in this life. Glorification take place in the life to come. In the life to come, it means the glorification of the inner person and the resurrection of the body in glory. The glorification of the inner person and the res resurrection of the body in glory. I'm repeating that. How can one be happy in heaven when they know their mother or father have a part in the lake of fire. Paul says the spiritual is not first, but the natural and afterwards the spiritual. First Corinthians 15, 45. The natural is first, we are to get glorified bodies first in the resurrection of our bodies. Some people object to the resurrection of the body on the grounds that it was too hard to understand. Paul called these people foolish. Difficulty understanding the, nat the nature of a resurrection should not cause a person to doubt its reality any more than not understanding how a seed becomes a plant should cause disbelief in the coming harvest. So there is a natural body and there is a spiritual, I don't wanna say body cause spirit don't have a body, a spiritual entity. Those of us who have truly given our lives to Christ are involved in corruptible putting on in corruption and the mortal putting on immortality, that's our body and the corruptible putting on the incorruption 
is our spirit, our person, our self, our soul. This is what the saying, oh, death, where is your sting? And oh, Hades, where is your victory? That's what that's about. That saying is about Paul says the sting of death is sin. And the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who, who gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. It's always about Christ. Bear in mind, it's always about Jesus Christ. This is not done through anyone else and anything else. So we all have borne the image of Adam mm -hmm, and inherited his sin. We who have accepted Christ have borne the image of Christ and have accepted his righteousness. The second Adam is Christ, who takes away the sin of the world. This happens by our belief in God, in God's grace, our belief in what Jesus done for us, in God's grace. Many people receive a watered down gospel which stagnates spiritual growth and spiritual maturity. So consequently, many people lack truthful information concerning righteousness and lack experience in practicing the correct information. Maturity comes from practice, spiritual maturity. The writer of the book of Hebrews wrote that by this time, you ought to be teachers of God's word, but you have come to still need milk and not solid food. For everyone who partakes only of milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe, according to Hebrews 5, 13 through 14. Some people are disturbed when they hear this. Matthew 10, 34 to 39. Do not think that I came to bring peace on earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and a man's enemies will be those of his own household. He who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he who does not take his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. He who finds his life will lose it. And he who loses his life for my sake will find it. These some harsh words. A crowd of people told Jesus that his mother and brothers were asking for him. And Jesus spoke response was, who is my mother and my brothers? For whoever does the will of God is my brother and my sister and my mother. How can one be happy in heaven? when they know that their mother, father, and close relatives and close friends are in the lake of fire. 
Take note of Jesus' sincere attitude. Here are my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of God is my brother and my mother and sister. We know that we get glorified bodies from reading the scriptures. Our bodies, our body changes after it dies and is resurrected. Do we likewise get a glorified attitude? Does our spirit become glorified? In glorification may lie the answer to how we can be happy in heaven with loved ones in hell. Being saved involves justification, regeneration, and then the process of sanctification and finally glorification. Apostle John recorded Jesus' prayer to his father. And in that prayer, Jesus prayed that he sanctify himself for his apostles, for his apostles' sakes, he sanctified himself, that they may be sanctified by the truth. And the glory which you gave me, Jesus talking to his father, and the glory which you gave me, I have given them that they may be one, just as we are one. And that prayer was also for those who believe in Christ through the apostles' word. John, that's John 17. I mentioned that there are some Christians still requiring milk immature because they lack information and experience. Many lack three things. God is holy. No grasp of the nature of God. Two, who are you? Hmm? Folk do not know who they are. Three, what is glorification? God is holy, an infinite, intelligent spirit, and the creator and supreme ruler of the heavens and earth. He is almighty, omnipotent, present in all places at all times, omnipresent knows everything there is to know, Omni, the omniscient. God is three distinct persons with a, a loving relationship between each one of the persons. This leads to how and why God is love. Since we have sinned against God, he exercises loving kindness, justice, and righteousness on the earth. And in exercising these things on earth, God delights. But all we have been doing is sinning against God. And we complain about his punishment. Wars, diseases, even this COVID turning us over to reprobate man. We got people that don't even know whether they're a man or a woman. We do have problems because of our sin, it's punishment. This did not stop Jesus from going to the cross 
as the demonstration or as he demonstrated his own love toward us. In that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us, Romans 5 and 8. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. And if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. That's 1 John 1, 8 through 10. Now, who are you? How are you going to know who you are without knowing or believing in the creator? There were some Pharisees debating with Jesus and Jesus told them who their father was. But they didn't know. Jesus told them the, the devil is your father. You're not going to know who you are without knowing who the creator that you were created. How are you going to know who you are? You think you came by accident and was evoluted. Adam, a creature made in God's image, gave his obedience to a lovely female creature that God made from his rib and gave her to him as a helper. She listened to Satan, not knowing that she was being deceived and of course also disobedient to God. But Adam knew, Adam knew it. When he saw this lovely woman that God gave him, offering him fruit from the forbidden tree, what if he said no to her? I don't want the fruit that you just taken of, have eaten of. Would God have taken Eve away from him? Could he have a fear of that occurring? But anyway, Adam decided to join her in eating of that forbidden fruit from the forbidden tree. He may not wanted to see her get in tr serious trouble alone and decided to join her in it, perhaps. Sin fell upon the whole world. God's righteous wrath had to be appeased somehow. God sent his son and satisfied his own wrath with, with Jesus' sacrifice on the cross. Our sins made it necessary for Jesus to suffer the agonies of the crucifixion. Persons who do not accept this or believe this are on their own. And this will include your loved ones in the lake of fire while you are in heaven with Christ. So what is glorification? It will result in you being closer than you ever been before to God, that you are, than you are to your mother and father and your loved ones. You will be more closer to God than anyone else. Jesus had to have a way to come to earth. So he came through a mother and each one of us come to earth through someone. It's our way to get here, it seems. For Jesus himself came here that way. God will, be, God will be first in your heart and everything would have turned 
to be so amazing when God is first in your heart. Glorification will take place of the inner person and the resurrection of the body in glory. John wrote in verse three, and, the, and he will dwell with them and they shall be his people and God himself shall be with them and be their God. In verse four, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. How can you be crying when God is wiping away all the tears from your eyes? And there shall be no more death, neither sorrow. God is wiping away all the sorrows, nor crying. Neither shall there be any more pain. All this is being wiped away. For the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren, moreover, whom he predestined. These he also called whom he called these, he also justified, and whom he justified these, he also glorified. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Now think about your loved ones in the lake of fire. You know that God is just. If you had a friend that was incarcerated, but you know that he really did something, that he's incarcerated justifiably, will you feel real bad about that? He's, he's incarcerated justifiably, but you would be feel bad if he's incarcerated unjustly, of course, but you will know that God is just and you have become just and able to see the seriousness of the good reasons they would be taking part in the lake of fire and brimstone and the reasons why they cannot be in heaven with you. Your loved ones in the lake of fire and brimstone would be the fearful and the unbelieving and the abominable and the murderers and the uh, sexual immorale, the tea they, they would display or whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters, greed is idolatry. And all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. God desired that no one should perish. And when he made this statement in 2 Peter, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering toward us, not willing that anyone, any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And when God said this, he had to have known that many people were going to be in hell. And you should know it because you will be now siding with God. We are here for his purpose, not for the purpose of your loved ones. 
And our purpose is to love God with all our heart, soul, mind, and love our neighbor as ourselves. And we should go tell those people about Jesus Christ, that they may be saved. Amen. Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Father, we come before your throne of grace as always to thank you, to give you honor, and to give you glory for which you so richly deserve. Father, we thank you for the way you have made to get us back to you. We may not understand the difference between holiness and sin, but we know that holiness and sin does not and cannot go together. And we realize it's your desire that we be holy as you are holy. And in order for us to come to heaven, we have to be holy as, as you are holy. And I, I see that involves glorification and all the glory and all the honor goes to you, Father. Glory be to your holy name. It's in Jesus' name that we pray, amen and amen. Thank you, Father. Amen. Amen. We, we do give God all of the honor and all of the glory, all the praise for the great, marvelous and magnificent things that he has done. Reverend Lundy, I, I don't know what to say. Once again, you have uh, provided for our listening audience across the world a formidable treatise on how can one be happy in heaven knowing your loved one is in hell? And you talked about glorification and how in that glorified state, we might not even be aware of it. But nevertheless, we don't know what all the possibilities that God has about our unlimited knowledge in our spiritual state. It speaks to even more reason why it is important for us as good Christians, and particularly for you and I as carriers of the gospel of Jesus Christ, to sound the alarm, to alert people that they do not want to end up in a sin-sick state where their lives will take them into eternal damnation simply because they did not want to accept our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I don't know about you, but I'm excited about the task that we have before us. The older that I get, the more reasoning and rationale comes to my mind the sense of urgency to go forth with boldness, courage, and power to let people know that Jesus Christ is the son of God, that he died for uh, the sins of, of mankind. That is those who will accept him as Lord and Savior. It is a, it is a real honor, a real honor to, to state this in the open to media, presidents, doctors, lawyers, it doesn't matter to me who they are. You talked about today, to be really realistic about it, you, you don't wanna see anyone go to hell. You don't wanna see anyone to be cast into the lake of fire. But for those people who refuse to believe and, and those that you talked about who are hard-headed and uh, just refuse to uh, follow the ordinances, the statutes and, and the commands of God, well, there's a place for them. And that place is Sheol, that place is hell. The book of Matthew chapter 25 describes that place in certain terms. 
for in the book of Matthew chapter 25, the Bible teaches us that God says, and cast ye the unprofitable servant. In other words, those who did not do what is stated in Matthew chapter 25, around the 30th verse, they did not go out and feed the hungry and clothe those who did not have clothes and then visit those that were in prison and perform the actual work of the gospel, such as what Jesus Christ did. He says, and cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness, outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Weeping and gnash of teeth in outer darkness as they are in and consumed by hell she owe into the lake of fire and brimstone forever. Yes, uh, Reverend Lundy, I think that what we want is for people to get beyond their own imagination and their limited thoughts about the eternal state, where they will go when this body is consumed and goes back to the ground as ashes to ashes and dust to dust. And that's what you have talked about here today with power and force. For those that don't believe it, as you are in the book of Revelation, chapter 21, verses one through eight, if they can't read that far, they need to go back to Revelation chapter two and three, where God is addressing the seven churches. And at the end of addressing every church, he says one thing, for, for those that have an ear, let them hear. For the Bible declares to us that none are without excuse. Because once you've heard the word of God, as Reverend Harry E. Lundy has preached it today, you too are without excuse. Our hope and our promise is that you will hear the word of God and that you will activate it. Activate it in your life so that you won't have to be on this list of people that we are wondering how can we be happy, God willing that we make it to heaven and you are cast into the lake of fire where there will be weeping and the gashing of teeth throughout all eternity. We don't get paid a lot, if anything, to preach the gospel. But our reward will be in heaven, where Jesus Christ will say to us that have propagated and tried to live a righteous life, that have tried to follow the ordinances, the statutes, and the commands of God, and have foregone the pleasures of this world, when Jesus Christ says, well done, my good and faithful servant, coming to the kingdom of God, coming to his rest, our heart goes out to each of you. We're begging you, we're telling you that we need you to accept our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Wherever you stand, wherever you sit, you can simply stop. And you can simply say, right now, Lord Jesus, I receive you as my personal Savior. Save me, Lord Jesus. Help me. I accept you, God. Transform my life today. Help me, Lord, to serve you in your kingdom. That I will not go to hell. And you can thank Jesus for doing it for you. For it's by his stripes that you are here. Yes, Reverend Lundy, that was a powerful, powerful. A message that you delivered today. I'm glad to uh, be a part of it through our church service for Christ Baptist Church. I pray, I pray that God will uh, continue to strengthen you, give you more vigor, give you more love, give you more patience, 
that God will give you every single thing that you need in order to get through this life. We'll be right back, folks. And Reverend London will give us final of this service today. Amen. Amen. Reverend Lonnie, please go ahead and continue with your closing for today. And may God bless you, sir. And thank you so very much for your faithfulness and for the work that you're doing on behalf of serving for Christ Baptist Church and the kingdom of God. May God bless you, sir. Thank you. In closing, I just want to say God's desire is that all people, all men, be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. And that's 1 Timothy 2 and 4. And let us bow our heads for benediction. May the grace of God and the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit rest, rule, abide in us, for us, both now and forevermore. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Go in peace. Amen. Amen. And may God bless you all. We uh, want to wish you all a very happy Sunday as you go forth. Please be careful. Don't forget the pandemic might be slowing down, but people are still getting sick. So please remember to uh, wear your mask to protect yourself. That's all we have for now. On behalf of Reverend Lundy, our internet pastor, I am Jerry Jones, pastor of Servants for Christ. We love you, we thank you, and we'll see you next week with more from the gospel truth. May God bless you all. Good day, everyone. Bye-bye.